Welcome back from an ad break. Um, we are going to continue with our lesson under the topic, the impact of recent legislation on businesses. We have covered the BCA. Now we're going to focus on the COIDA, which is the Compensation uh, of Occupational Injuries and Diseases Act. So what is the purpose of this legislation? It provides a comprehensive protection to employees who are injured in the course of performing their duties. So comprehensive meaning what? A full protection, basically. Full protection uh, to employees who are injured in the course of performing their duties. Basically, once they get injured whilst they are still uh, on duty. We're not talking about a person who will be injured while they're busy doing their work and then come and claim that, but I'm an employee of this business. No, but where were you during that time? So it's very important that we understand that all of that, the injuries uh, happened whilst you were still on duty. Right, so COIDA applies to all casual and full-time workers who become injured due to a workplace accident very important due to a workplace accident so uh, it applies to such people but if it's not due to a workplace accident then it does not apply to you right it excludes workers who are guilty of willful willful misconduct so if you got injured by due to negligence maybe or you knew very well that you're not supposed to come into this area especially if you're not protected you're not wearing the right um clothing that you're supposed to to wear and then you get injured by doing that then it excludes you because this is willful misconduct it's negligence you knew very well that you're supposed to protect yourself however you did not protect yourself so this is the the purpose of COIDA. Very important that before you can study the impacts and the other things under COIDA, you understand the purpose of COIDA. So here, full protection for employees who are injured in the course of performing their duties. Very important. Very, very important. All right, we're going to move on to the impacts of the COIDA. So what are the impacts of COIDA? We're starting off with the advantages. Don't forget, impacts refers to the positives and the negatives. Right, so what does COIDA do? It promotes safety in the workplace. Employees do not contribute towards this fund. So who contributes if it's not employees? It's the employer's duty to contribute. So as employees, we just enjoy working and complying and following the rules basically, but we do not contribute as employees. The employer is the one that contributes towards this fund, which could be a disadvantage, especially if the business is not doing well financially. So, but now it's good for us as employees because you're not contributing. It makes business to be more socially responsible as they cannot just employ workers at random in dangerous working conditions. So you need to ensure that as a business, it is safe. We are employing people to work in a safe environment. As you've mentioned in the first bullet to say it promotes safety in the workplace because if it does not promote safety or if we do not ensure that employees are working in a safe place, and then it means we're going to be paying quite a lot of uh, people because they'll be injured there'll be injuries every now and then and if there are so many injuries that could also lead to a publicity a negative publicity and nobody would want to work for us if we are known for like of injuring people right so the negatives of this particular legislation is that the claiming process can be time consuming so here we are also referring to it uh, to the admin work it's there's a whole lot of paperwork, a lot of investigations that needs to go through this because we need to investigate what happened, where was this person when this was happening, why, and all those things. So the claiming process could be time consuming, so many investigations that needs to take place here. And the implementation processes required by the Act can be expensive. So if we want to put this into action, it can be expensive. Like I said, the employees don't have to pay anything, but as employers, we have to pay. Right, so workers who are permanently employed in foreign countries are not covered, unfortunately, because we cannot even prove, there's no proof that uh, the injuries took place where and, and all that. So workers who are permanently employed in other countries uh, are not covered. So only those that are employed in, 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 in the country. Right, so now we are going to be looking at the penalties to say if we do not 
uh, comply, what happens. So these are the punishments. And remember, said this is a negative thing, and we don't want to find ourselves being uh, involved in all of these negativities or negative things. So it says here, businesses may face heavy fines for non-compliances, fines again. So heavy fines sometimes could be money. So if it's a heavy fine and a business is not doing well uh, financially, and then it is a negative, it's a negative thing, and we don't want that. So businesses may face heavy fines for non-compliances. They can be ordered to pay compensation and damages to the employee as a business. We have to take money from our own pocket and pay uh, compensation to those damages. And where is the money coming from? From us, which is, is, is something else that we don't want. Labor inspectors may conduct on-site visits to interview employees, which can create a bad image for their business. Remember when I said to you, there's gonna be investigations that take place. So here, these are the investigations that are taking place. So labor invest, um, inspectors are conducting these uh, visits to interview employees because they wanna ask them that, okay, what happened? Or how, how, how do you feel working here? Is it safe to be working here? And, and all those things, are you given the protective gears here? Are you, do you feel safe to be working here or not? Or do you feel Feel like um, it's not safe to be working here so that could lead to what it creates a bad image for the business so nobody wants to be associated with such a business all right so if we want to avoid all of that what must we do as a business we want to avoid all those negative images all those uh, creating bad publicities we don't want all of that what must we do as a business we need to comply with COIDA we need to abide we need to follow what the legislations requires from us so the first thing that we need to do as a business is to register with the compensation commissioner and provide the particulars of the business what do you mean by the particulars who have you employed how many people have we employed and what is it uh, what is the nature of our business and so on and on so it is very important and not only register but we need to report all accidents causing the injury of employees that needs to be recorded to be reported timelessly on time as soon as it has happened it needs to be recorded we need i mean reported um all of that and then the other thing that needs to be done levies must be paid to the compensation fund. Now, who pays these levies? Don't forget, it's the employer. It's not the employee. So levies must be paid to the compensation fund. Failure to do that, it will lead to what? To the penalties. Don't forget that. All right, so we've come to an end of the lesson. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed the lesson because I've enjoyed it and not only enjoyed, but I've learned so much, the BCA and the COIDA. Don't forget, we spoke about the BCA having um, the, the, the provisions, but the COIDA doesn't have provisions. Don't forget that. So I'm hoping to see you again next time. Goodbye.